What's up, universe? I'm Julie Yoon. Welcome back to our channel. And Thanksgiving happens to be one of my most favorite holidays, but it can also be stressful if you're hosting. But don't worry, I decided to compile some of my favorite tips so that you can win at Thanksgiving. Number one, use a large ice chest. And I happen to have one in my catering days and it does come in handy. But one of my most practical things is to take all of the items that are in your fridge that are taking up valuable real estate, like condiments, like mustard and ketchup and pickles, things that you're not gonna necessarily use but just happen to be in your fridge, keep them in your ice chest with some ice and just throw it in your garage. It'll stay cold and then you don't have to worry about it and then you can start with a blank slate in your fridge. So then when you have to put the platters and the salads and all the prep work, you have plenty of space in there. Two, use your slow cooker as a mashed potato holder. I actually heard this tip from one of my friends, but I think that's a great idea because that's something that you can just get out of the way. Mashed potatoes notoriously take a lot of prep work with the peeling, chopping, boiling, mashing. And then how do you hold them without them turning clumpy, gluey, or cold? And usually I have to keep them on my stove top over like a water bath so that they stay nice and smooth or stick them in the oven in a casserole dish. With a slow cooker, all you have to do is butter the bottom of your dish and then add a little bit of cream. Then you just throw in your prepared mashed potatoes that are already cooked and then set it on low and then once in a while just give it a stir just to make sure that it stays creamy and dreamy. But that leads me to number three. Use a big thermos as a gravy holder. If you're running out of space in your kitchen, and in the past I used to just keep my gravy in a small pot and then heat it up again when the guests arrive, but that does take up a lot of real estate. So once you make your gravy, just get one of those large size thermoses, stick it in there and keep it warm. And then obviously you don't wanna do this too, too much in advance, but if you can just do this maybe like a little bit before your guests arrive, then you have it. And then all you have to do is decant it into a gravy boat and then you're ready to serve it. Number four, use your kitchen cabinets. So I love painter's tape. I always have it around in my kitchen. I think it's just like a hack that I picked up during my catering and professional chefing days. So you just wanna stick your recipes. You wanna do it old school style where you print out your recipes that you're looking for because then you don't mind that they're getting greasy. You don't have to worry about your tablet or your phone getting all greasy and buttery. Just print out your recipes old school style and then tape them on your cabinets. That way they're eye level. You can switch them around so you know what order to do it. You can take them down, scribble on it, cross something out, make revisions. And then it's just easy because then you kind of know what's coming up next, what you still have to do. It's kind of like the concept of being a line cook. Number five, chicken broth to the rescue. Chicken broth is a must whenever you're cooking Thanksgiving. I tend to use it on hand for any time I need something loosened up, have a little bit more flavor because it's missing a hint of something, or when something gets cold and you want to warm it up. For instance, you know the turkey's going to be done and it'd be sitting out there to rest, and then when you carve it, sometimes it can dry out as it's carved. So you can just put it like in a rimmed dish and pour some hot chicken stock over it. It'll warm up the pieces and keep it moist. This also works when you overcook your turkey accidentally and you're like, oh no, now what? Obviously the gravy works too, but it does help to have a little bit of chicken broth in there to moisten it up before you serve it to your guests. Number six, invest in an instant read thermometer. I'll leave all links to anything I mentioned down below in the description box. This is the Javelin Pro. You want something that can read the temperature very quickly, efficiently, and you don't have to keep your hands into the oven for a long amount of time. So this will take the guesswork out of all your big casseroles, making sure that it's heated up to the right temperature. Obviously your turkey, your ham, anything else that you're cooking. That way you don't have to worry about that little plastic timer that comes with your turkey to pop up to be done. Those are unreliable. You want to use a real thermometer. You want to get a digital instant read one so that it reads it quick and fast and efficiently. When you are taking the temperature of your turkey, just remember to not put it so close to the bone because that's going to affect your temperature in a different way. And when you stick this into a turkey thigh, it should register about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So just keep that in mind. Number seven, keep your early bird guests busy. Okay, I don't know about you, but I do like help. When people come into my home and ask me, 
do need help, very rarely will I send them away. I think that they like getting involved and it does help you, but sometimes there's too many cooks in the kitchen or my kitchen is small and sometimes it gets in the way. So you want your guests to do certain tasks that you reserve for them, such as like hanging up coats or putting out utensils, filling up glasses of water, uncorking wine and pouring it out, even playing and wrangling with children. Anything that might be a little bit easier, like filling a bread basket or even dumping some of the food that you prepared into the designated dishes. Just get them involved in a way that really does help you so you don't have to worry about it yourself, but they don't really get in the way. Number eight, empty the dishwasher and the trash can the night before. It's just like the same concept of wanting to have a, a clean slate like the fridge. These are all things that you don't really think about, but then as you're prepping your food, you're gonna have all these dirty dishes. And of course, I end up just kind of washing it by hand real quick because I have to reuse it. But some other times, you'd wanna just throw it into your dishwasher and load it and know that it's gonna be all dirty dishes. Same thing with your trash can. You wanna start out with, it's gonna overflow, I think regardless, because all the prep work and all the food scraps. So make sure that you have another trash bag ready on hand, maybe even bagged in there already, like double bag it so you don't have to fumble with it later but have that ready to go. Give yourself a head start. Nine, set the table the night before and get all your platters ready. I just wanna make sure that I have a dish for every single dish that I'm making and that you have your serving ware and you know where the turkey's gonna go and that you have all your stacks of plates, your silverware, your wine glasses, like all of that ready to go. If you can, try to reserve all those things outside of your kitchen, like on your dining table or wherever it is. And then I even go the extra mile by putting post-it notes on top of the dishes, labeling corn, green beans, cranberry sauce, whatever it is so that I know and my guests know where it is. So for my early bird guests who come, they can easily grab that cranberry sauce bowl and come and know what to do with it. It just saves you a whole lot of stress. 10, have some snacks ready. I know that you're gonna be eating this huge big meal and most people starve all day, but the thing is that when the guests come and you smell those like, turkey smells and all those things, you get so hungry and so ravenous that it is kind of nice to whet the appetite by giving a little something. But I also have another video coming out that's gonna recommend some snacks and side dishes for Thanksgiving too. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you know when that video comes out next because I'm gonna be walking through some of my favorite side dishes, snacks, and starters for Thanksgiving. And you know, I'm just gonna run through quickly a few, maybe some unexpected tools you might need for Thanksgiving. I already mentioned having the instant read thermometer, that is key. But also keep in mind that you're gonna need Ziploc bags of different sizes. Ziploc bags are good for prep, so that's gonna be your best friend for like the whole week leading up to Thanksgiving. I like to pre-chop onions, pre-mince garlic, cut anything that you need to do, or even pre-rinse or wash or shred things that I don't need to do on that day that can really hold itself. Likewise, I'll leave a link for you on restaurant style takeout containers. You know what I'm talking about. They're like the soup containers that you see, quart size or pint, and those come in so handy. When we were working on this project called Underground Supper Club, which by the way, guys, I have to put that vlog series out for you. We were so bad about it, but stay tuned. Hopefully they'll come out too. That's when we were kind of doing this underground restaurant project and that came in handy, having those little containers of plastic ware because then you can do all your prep work, label it with painter's tape. It's organized, stacks nicely, closes, and it doesn't spill. They can also double for takeout containers. So then later on when your guests are about to leave, you can send them home with those containers with the gravies and soups and mashed potatoes and everything. And that's a win-win. And I don't wanna get so into this because I have a ton of videos coming up about my best kitchen tools and pots and pans that I recommend. But for Thanksgiving especially, invest in this little duo and maybe a couple of them. This little baking rack and rimmed baking sheet. Whether it's for cooling baked goods, resting things, raising your meats or turkeys above so that the air circulation can get through. I mean, they're good for holding, good for warming. Like if you wanna keep some things warm in the oven, rimmed baking sheets and the wire cooling racks, they are definitely gonna be your best friends for Thanksgiving. And lastly, get yourself a good wooden carving board. I actually just got this because I've been wanting one, eyeing one, thinking about one for so long finally took the plunge. 
It doesn't necessarily have to have this little groove like mine. Um, this is actually double-sided, so on the other side it doesn't have it. But this is meant for putting like large roasts and turkeys because the last thing you want to do is when you carve that delicious turkey to lose all of that juice. So you want it to be able to catch it in the grooves, make sure it's large enough, it's sturdy enough, that you can hold that turkey, that ham, whatever you're carving, and don't lose that juice. So if you're about to invest in it, invest in it now. I feel like it'll save you a lot of heartache and all the juices won't spill all over your countertop. And if you wanna know more about my favorite kitchen tools, pots, pans, and general kitchen gear and equipment, leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you and I really wanna start this conversation. Let me know what you wanna know more about. And if you enjoyed watching this video, remember to give it a thumbs up because I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.